All right, I think we can start. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Ricardo. I am senior software engineer for uh, Red Hat, specifically for the uh, the Red Hat OpenShift Data Science product. So a bit more about me. Uh, I, as I just said, uh, I work, I'm working as a senior software engineer at Rhodes. Um, I, I'm currently, I'm a master's student at the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, with that being said, uh, I would say because of work and, and school, I would say that big, I'm, I'm a big fan of big data and data engineering. I'm also a piano student. And as you can see, I'm Brazilian. So anything you can ask me about capoeira, cachaça, or caipirinha, you can ask me. Oops. So what, what we'll discuss today, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Open Data Hub, uh, which is the open source project for roads. Um, my main skills is about data engineering uh, and data governance so i'll talk a little bit about the, uh, both topics and we'll discuss a bit about spark and spark sql trino data analytics and whatnot in uh, the future oops i think i got a problem with it the slides, one second, please. Something happened. Okay. Maybe it's better if I show that way. If it's do sharing. No. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. When I'm sharing, I don't see the figure here. But I can do it in a different way, just not let people curious about the picture. I'm talking about this one. So that's basically what represents the whole Open Data Hub project. Um, Open Data Hub is supposed to be a hybrid cloud AI ML platform in which you can have a, a complete platform where you can manage the whole data life cycle from storing the data, transforming, creating models, run experiments, deploying them as a service and whatnot, uh, gathering metrics and uh, results. Um, oh, we, heard of, the focus, but we cannot see the uh, image on this slide. Yeah, I know that because I just shared a Google Chrome, not the screen. All right. I think that works. Yeah, we can see it now. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so that's the picture. So we can talk about, in Open Data Hub, we can talk about transforming data, creating models, uh, running experiments, deploying them as a service, and gathering and store metrics and results. Uh, the focus of this talk is about transforming data, not creating models, because it's, uh, it's a data scientist uh, that's responsibility. Um, the idea here is to talk about the data engineering tasks. All right, moving on to the slides here. And now I suppose we won't have any problems with sharing any other pictures. Um, so what's data engineering? Um, Data engineering is a new and cool uh, discipline of the, uh, what we can call it about the, the overall data science thing, which is uh, about ingesting data, transforming the data, managing the metadata if, uh, when you need, and storing them into better formats, and whatnot, visualizing them. Um, that's basically, it's something that uh, one of the biggest skills that data engineers need is software engineering as well as SQL, as, uh, 
data, uh, data warehouse uh, skills. Okay, so for data governance, uh, there, just like uh, any other book of knowledge, but of knowledge, we have one specific for data governance, which we call the theme of the MPOC, the data management bot of knowledge. And uh, the bot of knowledge for data management shows up all the, uh, all the disciplines around data governance. And I'm here um, emphasizing some of the things that we've been, uh, the Open Data Hub has been working throughout these, uh, these quarters. So uh, we are working on a data architecture for uh, storing data, to enforce data security, to manage data in a way that you can uh, have a data warehousing and business intelligence enabled. Okay, so for our data architectures, we started with a few requirements which stands for performance that will most perform with uh, multiple sources of data. Uh, all of them should be like be part of one single single um, data structure in multiple formats and coming from um, providing structured data coming from unstructured or semi-structured data. Uh, security, it's the biggest, uh, the biggest requirement and the biggest challenges we, we've had and with, we're still facing, uh, which stands for enforcing the confidentiality to data, uh, getting uh, right people and right teams, uh, getting access to the right data or if that data can be shared publicly or parts of it. Uh, with that, that comes the policy management, which stands off uh, out here with the, all the data protection laws uh, around the globe in, in, in a way that you can um, have a global management of all, all the data architecture components. That was for the data engineering side. Uh, for the data governance, we were looking for having multiple sources of data, um, um, multiple sources of data part of uh, that data architecture in which ETL workflows could not always be the best solution. So uh, those sources should not be changed. They just, uh, uh, need to be added into the architecture so the data can be queried in the right source. Um, so we're not talking directly about transforming data to move from one, one source to another. Also, um, what we expect for uh, leveraging this architecture for uh, a broad data governance solution is to have global data security. So uh, no matter what, what the data assets, and by data assets is a term of the DM block uh, that says every, every entity that represents data, it's a data asset. So it can be data stored in a Ceph bucket, it can be a table in a relational or a NoSQL data store, or it can be a workflow, whatever it is, everything is a data asset. So that's the idea of having uh, global data security. It's to have the right access to uh, the data assets for an, to an individual or a team. Also, as we're, we're talking about uh, moving uh, data through what we call transformations, like transforming a set bucket into a, a table, uh, this transformation must be documented or at least track it by uh, any solution. That's what we call the data, data lineage. And whatnot, uh, since we're talking about a uh, 
uh, vast amount of data coming from multiple sources of data in multiple formats. Uh, it can be a structure, semi-structure, or even uh, well-structured. We must ensure data quality no matter what is the uh, what is the data or how the data looks like. So Forbes uh, has a good article about the three pillars of a real world data engineering, which stands off a metadata, data lineage, and data quality. So in order to reach data lineage, you must have uh, a good metadata management system, uh, which will get all the information, all the data you have in your uh, organization. But the data lineage and the metadata well um, structure or uh, with a good process for both will uh, end up with a good data quality process. All right, so uh, the question we made a couple of years ago is, how to work with multiple sources of data, enforcing access and quality to data, and with a central management console for metadata. Uh, one other topic that we didn't, uh, I didn't put in that question is, this must be a hybrid cloud solution. So there comes our first uh, architecture, which we call the data catalog, that involved uh, the Spark and more specifically, one component that we call the Spark SQL Thrift Server. Uh, Spark is known as a good framework for parallel distributed data processing. So with that, we decided to use uh, Spark uh, as we had a good amount of development effort on the Red Analytics project, and then we got we used all that experience with creating uh, that architecture around spark uh, all we needed is also uh, add this additional component called the thrift server which is just like uh, a spark application but it mimics the hive uh, the hadoop hive endpoint so because of that we have a separate Hive Metastar, where uh, Thrift Server will store all the data about the the tables created by it, by by the data catalog architecture, and then it will be used as a, a central endpoint for clients like uh, the data analyst from Superset or the data engineer from Hue to get to the data uh, through Spark a Spark cluster querying the the data lake. Uh, this was good, uh, but we had our first problems. Uh, although uh, we know about the capabilities to, to, for Spark to process data, uh, we couldn't find the same process, the same performance for querying data. And we, we have some suspicions about the, that additional component, uh, the Thrift server, that might be like the single point of failure or even uh, requiring more uh, resources, like the same resources than the Spark cluster. But no matter what we did, we can find a good combination of uh, resources configuration between Spark cluster and the Thrift server to, uh, to get a good performance on querying data. Uh, at this point, we're not talking about uh, billions of rows, but millions of rows, we didn't get a good performance. Um, one of the biggest problems we had and the most concerns on adopting Spark in that uh, architecture is that security in Spark is not implemented by design. And most of the security aspects we need for our overall data catalog, um, data governance solution would uh, need custom development. So most of it we we did, but not with um, a good global security as we expected. Also, 
because of that, we do have a way to enable policy management through all this, this architecture. Uh, with that problems, we were looking for other uh, architectures that could uh, solve the biggest problems we had. And then we found a, another project called Trino, which was known as a Presto SQL. And now it's uh, the open source project for Trino DP from Starburst. Um, one of the biggest difference on the architecture is that um, we don't need a intermediate component like we did for Thrift Server. Uh, so users, uh, the data analyst from Superset or the data engineer from Hue can query the cluster directly, not a intermediary component, an intermediate component to reach the, 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 the cluster. Uh, with that, um, we also uh, separated the Hive Beta Star from the cluster, and we can connect whatever is uh, we can connect other uh, other clusters, like even uh, Thrift Server in that uh, in their architecture. So we can have a mix of of Trino and Spark. Uh, in some situations. All right, so we have a better solution and also better problems. Uh, that doesn't mean with uh, Trino, we implemented everything we need for, for data governance, but at least for performance, we noticed that we got a better scaling for querying data. So Thinks that if query test that takes around 30 minutes now can be done in 30 seconds. So that's a huge improvement. And, um, but we didn't uh, make any uh, experiments with using multiple sources of data. Uh, we'll still use one single source. And with single source, uh, I would say using not only uh, multiple Ceph buckets, but uh, mixing uh, Ceph with uh, relational and NoSQL data stars. So that would be a good combination for us, but we didn't, uh, we didn't have any experience around that. Um, one of the things for, for performance in Trino is that uh, statistics must be collected from all, all of the objects uh, created by it, because if with no statistics, we'll end up with the same performance as a Drift server. Also, we had better security. Well, actually, uh, we, we, definitely we have security in Trino because we don't need to uh, we don't need to develop anything additionally, uh, and then. We can create a good ACL uh, configuration among all the objects managed by Trino. And even granting uh, partial access to data by masking sensitive data or even uh, letting the user only query uh, some specific uh, data with some specific filter. But still, uh, it's only applicable for uh, data assets managed by Trino. Um, with that being said, policy management makes better uh, in in things like integrating with Superset and Hue, where you can uh, use those two components to use for policy management. We have better integration because uh, Trino doesn't mimic doesn't try to mimic uh, Hive. It's a very special endpoint with all the specific limitations with all of these uh, specific clients. So it's uh, it's it has better integration with both components, but still no global policy management. So uh, with that being said, that's 
one of the things we'll, we we've been working currently so what would be our next big thing uh, we're looking for enabling our full data governance solution by having like uh, OPA, open policy agent to give a global data security solution using uh, a plugin in Trino, which will uh, will need to develop. Uh, and with open policy agent, we can connect uh, Apache Atlas to give a data cataloging solution uh, and whatnot using a good UI like a Moonsyn. And uh, for data quality, we're looking for, we're still looking for other solutions, but maybe Kubeflow pipelines will make that. Um, so um, again, uh, we'll, we'll still have a problem that data still relies on a central repository, although in a distributed fashion, we said, but we're looking for other integrations with like ODF or other solutions that could give uh, multiple uh, multiple data repositories. Um, for global data security, uh, we believe that with OPA added into the that solution, it will make uh, real our proposal for data security. So we can have documented set of rules that can grant or deny partial of or full access to data, which will be good. So for data new lineage, we're still looking for uh, solutions, uh, but we would like to see um, solutions that could be added to this architecture that could do some, some kind of data versioning as well as uh, getting track all, of all of the transformations made by the data assets. Uh, that would be a good thing. Uh, as for data quality, uh, like I said, we can, um, we can ensure data, uh, data quality through uh, automated workflows, but yet not something that, that's done in an automated way. So this is uh, one proposal we have for data governance story for, in Open Data Hub. And uh, spoiler alert, there's only one person uh, who knows about this roadmap, including myself. So it's not guaranteed to uh, stick to that date. So uh, we want to finish our uh, idea of the, a global data security solution maybe with Open, Trino, and Set, And then we'll move on to the data cataloging area where we'll finally have a good UI for users to uh, look for the data uh, available in the organization and see who are the, the owners of that data, request access, and maybe uh, having a automated way to approve data access to uh, that specific person. Um, also, we want to add data lineage and data quality. And at last, we're looking for some data mesh solutions to implement data at scale. All right, um, that's basically it. Um, my idea here is to just show up uh, all of the experience we made uh, in the Open Data Hub, um, work within the, the data engineering and data governance area. So if you have any questions, just let me know. And thank you so much. Uh, so Ricardo, there's a question in the chat by Eric. Uh, is there any solution in the roadmap for managing user identity uniformly, like SSO style, across all these tools, like Superset, Trino, OpenShift, uh, Python execution, etc.? We do. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, 
We've been uh, designing some uh, possible architectures for global authentication and authorization among these components too. Um, we are initially uh, looking for ways to integrate all these components with the OpenShift OL. Um, but we're also looking for other um, solutions like uh, using search mesh, but we're still on the design steps on it. So that, that will take some, um, some months until we have a definitive solution. But yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're moving forward to uh, having a global authentication solution for it. Well, we'll still have six minutes for more questions. Uh, let's just wait for some minutes as people might be still typing their questions. Yeah, that sounds good. And by the way, I'm sorry about the background, but I'm still finishing my new apartment. So at least there's something good to see, my piano. <laughs> no, I mean, as a college student, I think your apartment looks fantastic. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ricardo is the right masters. Yeah. Okay. I think there are no more questions, but if you want to reach me out, I'll send my in there in the chat so you can ask me anything about our um, our efforts to enable data governance over open data hub and whatnot grants all right thank you so much ricardo thank you all right bye folks <laughs>